What were some fights that were troublesome or really the most annoying to analyze or work on? So I pull up a few from this tier. Well, in this expansion, really, to start with. And then I pulled up my all-time pain in the ass boss from any expansion to go over last. So first, I'm going to go over some of the bosses from this expansion. I'll start with Sinarth. Sinarth is a pain in the ass because the way she's scripted is that she moves and stops constantly, but there's an inconsistency in it to where it's not always as precise as it other fights are, and it affects her timers. Like, I'm pretty sure DPS affects uh, her movements in some way, and so does spell queuing in some way. And the way a lot of us, like, both DBM and Bigwigs handled this boss was create a table of timers that was the most consistent, but this is actually the radically wrong way to do the fight. You see, it's not one table that goes the whole fight. It's actually seven tables. You heard me right. Seven tables per difficulty. Because the timers are different on each difficulty. And you have to have a table for start a fight, start moving, stop moving, start moving again, stop moving again, and so on. You get the idea. You have to have a table the sequence of timer for all those difficulties and to get that data and build a table that looks like this but like times seven this mod would be huge with an astronomical table of annoying timers just to improve the accuracy to 100% and both me and Big Wigs put our hands in the air like this and said, fuck it. We're not doing it. Not for this boss. If it was an end boss and it was a hard boss, sure. But being an, end or an early boss in the raid and not being consequential, if some timers are wrong on some pulls, it was just ultimately decided that this boss wasn't worth the time and effort to make 100% accurate. Especially since, at least initially, the events needed to even do it in the first place weren't even in the combat log. It required parsing chat emotes, and that requires specialized logging, which means getting the data in the first place to even perform the analysis, to even start creating this monstrous of a table, would require running Transcriptor across various uh, groups of skill, DPS, on all four difficulties, just to get the data in the first place and construct this table. So it was just ultimately decided, fuck this boss. And that's pretty much what the conclusion of this boss was. The next one, Echo of Notharian. This one was annoying because it's buggy. The first bug. Remember how I, in my other analysis videos, I talked about how sometimes when there's spell collision, one of the spells doesn't get queued, it gets skipped entirely. Well, Echo of Natharian has a bug where like literally 95% of the time, I went to probably 100 logs and saw the, saw the cast that was supposed to happen maybe five times. But there's supposed to be a darkness, a rushing darkness at the start of phase three after 10 seconds. That rushing darkness rarely ever happens because it has a cooldown collision with another spell and just gets skipped entirely. And then the second cast comes later after like 25, 26 seconds into the phase. Now, initially, the mod had a 27 second timer for uh, rushing darkness until the 10 second one was seen. It's like, oh, Blizzard added a new cast. Okay. So put a 10 second timer in there. But then immediately users are coming back. No, it's 27 seconds. It's like, but I saw a 10 second, 10 second cast. So I start going through more logs. And it's like, oh, maybe Blizzard changed their mind. I changed it back to 27 seconds because I couldn't find, I literally couldn't find another song that had 10 seconds. It's like, oh, maybe Blizzard was experimenting with something. And they just, they changed it and they changed it back. So I changed the mod back. Again, a user came in. We got this 10 second cast. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Is Blizzard just 
tweet fucking with the fight because I don't like the results of the fight or something. But I, I started digging deeper, and it turned out it was one of those cooldowns that are just broken. I reported it to Blizzard, and a common problem with Blizzard is uh, these kind of bugs, they don't actually fix them most of the time. If it's not actually making the fight undoable, they consider this bug a blessing. They actually like it. They're like, well, if it's fucking with boss mods, good. Because, you know, as I even said in a recent interview, they're having a trouble fighting against uh, add-ons. Like, they're trying to make it mechanics the add-ons can't defeat. So sometimes when a bug is actually defeating an add-on in some way, they actually consider it a win, and they're even less likely to fix it. But anyways, I created a workaround for it to where it starts a 10-second timer, but if it doesn't get cast, see... After five more seconds, it checks if it actually happened. If it didn't, it starts the backup timer for when it's going to happen due to the skip. And that's just one of the bugs in this fight. I'm not even done with this fight yet. Because there's also a bug with the heart timer. Volcanic heart. There's a bug where that gets skipped. But not really skipped. That's even more funny. The debuffs still go out, but the boss doesn't cast it. Like, the cast event just is missing sometimes. So this has to check for a missing cast event so the timers don't break. And it's a very specific cast. We don't know why it happens. Because it doesn't actually prevent the debuffs from going out. It just prevents the boss from casting it. And so that needed a fix. That was Echo of Notharian. Nagira. This boss is annoying, like many bosses, because the most important part of her phase changes was in the combat log. This right here, these spell scripts, you know, sword stance, knife stance, X stance, she gains these uh, stances when she picks a weapon. So basically, you don't know what weapon she's picking off the regular combat log. Like, at all, until she starts using the weapons mechanics later on, but then it's too late to start the timers. So when you're looking at Warcraft logs, you can't see what weapon she picked up. At all. Until you see what she starts casting. So if you want to have initial timers for when she actually picks up a weapon, again, you need to log the fight with Transcriptor. A specialized add-on that logs events that aren't in the combat log. You know, these events. And this is really annoying when they do this with bosses because it's so much extra work to get these logs because the average user, like, say... Remember, there's multiple difficulties to for these fights with different timers in each difficulty, like here, looking for raise a different timer than everything else. So, I need four logs for every boss. And when these things aren't in the public logs... Right off the bat, Warcraft log has now become a useless tool to me. I just lost access to hundreds of logs that could have been useful, and now none of them are. Not a one. I have to get a specialized log from a user from each difficulty. Even if I am raiding with my own guild, we're not doing all four difficulties. And we might not be doing Mythic right away either. Now fortunately, thanks to DBM's partnership with, you know, top guilds, the mythic logs are covered, and so are the heroic, usually. It's usually normal in LFR they're a little more problematic, because I have to find volunteers to run this add-on to special log the fight, just to get these events, because Blizzard decided to be an asshole. And I don't know why. I, again, I think it goes into that thing where they kind of like messing with boss mods sometimes. And it's like... It's kind of annoying, because they're not breaking the boss mod anyway. Like, any of the examples I've given so far... You know, skip timers, missing events in the combat log. This doesn't stop the boss mod from doing what it's going to do. It just makes the work a lot harder to make it do that. Like, either collecting the data is harder, or doing the code is harder. Both are pretty needless, if you ask me. It's like, it's unnecessary complications just for the sake of complications. But that's why Igora was an annoying boss. Laradar. Let's see, why did I pick this boss? 
I think this one mainly was just a spell queuing issue, where the timers could vary from pull to pull like here. But this pull is 21, 22, 24, 36. Very next pull, 21, 24, 35, 24. See how these two swapped? Fucking annoying. Because I get blamed for the timers being wrong, not Blizzard. This is what this is bad for boss encounters, if you really, especially for harder bosses like Laridar was on Mythic. It's not fun when timers can be different. Look at this pull. On this pull, this timer was 22. On this pull, it was 43. Same, same cast. So, what DBM does in these kind of situations, I just take multiple pulls, all the variations, and then use the lowest timer from each variation, you know, across the board. This one doesn't have any variations. And the charge problem, like, uh, this one was the one that had the most issues. This was caused by spell, spell queuing and conflict, and it's favor my abilities where the boss zooms out into bumfuck. So that, that's what that's affecting the timers more than anything, is how far you kite the boss out during charge alters the timers. But this one uses some kind of timer correction code somewhere around here. And that's kind of how it kind of fixes it, but it's still not perfect. And users to this day still kind of complain about it not being perfect. And I just like, it is what it is. Moving on. Kurog. This boss is annoying because he has a bunch of different abilities that are all tied to his, uh, Rotator spells, like the way this boss is actually scripted is he's got a damage selection, an avoid selection, and an ultimate selection. These are his three cooldown timers. It's just three static timers on a loop. And each, one, each difficulty has different behaviors, but I'll get into that. But basically, it chooses a spell, but what spell uses, you know, Biting Chill, Lightning Crash, Magma Burst, and Enveloping Earth are the damage selection. What one he chooses is based on what totem he's by. So what I basically do is I have to scan these IDs. It's, it's not four different cooldowns. It's one cooldown with four potential abilities. So what I have to do with this is I have to figure out what totem he's by, which is annoying in itself because there was no special event for what totem he's by other than just monitoring what his last stack application was. So you have to kind of hope that like, there isn't a perfect storm where the boss moves to a new totem, but, be, but then casts a special before he gains a new stack, and then the timer is going to show the wrong ability. For the most part, it hasn't been a problem, so that's fine. So that's good. But basically, current alter is equal to the last buff he gained, the left, last buff stacked, and then it chooses, uses that to determine which spell he's casting using the selectors, from these hard-coded tables. Like it pulls the spell name and spell icon and then swaps them interchangeably in the in the rolling timer that never actually cancels. Because the timer just, it doesn't change, but when you move into a new totem, no timer is reset. DBM just automatically swaps the icon and spell name on the timer in real time using this code. But another annoyance that was in addition to it is Blizzard decided that on a normal and LFR difficulty, a void selection was going to re be replaced with a second damage selection. So he actually does damage selection, damage selection, ultimate on easy and uh, LFR. So, but it still fires this spell ID, so that's what makes it very unique. So the way DBM handles it there is it actually just runs two damage timers in those difficulties instead of one and trying to like swap them around. It just it displays the timers exactly how it's coded. The damage selection and a void selection, with the void selection being these spells and not these spells on easy difficulty. 
Another thing, knowing thing about this boss, it had entirely too many mechanics. I can't stand mechanic bloat. A boss doesn't need to have like 30 spells just to be modern and hard. They could have called a lot of abilities out of this boss and he would have been just as good. Most of his abilities used by adds and intermission and stuff, but basically, this fight, this mod took a lot of effort to make. Volkaros. This is a unique uh, complication with his timers. And it comes down to the fact that uh, this is not 100% accurate. This is just consistent with like the 95 percentile. See, the way this boss works is uh, when, the, when there's one group, these, the tentacle slams that come up and slam down, they have a longer cooldown because they're slamming down in one sprop. But uh, the, it had, the code in the fight has some kind of clump check to where as soon as the groups are spread out enough, to where the tentacles are now in two different places at the same spot. The timers drop to be much shorter, as you can see here. This one's an exception. This one's he's using a special here. Where he does, I think, the the, the big smash. And it has like four more tentacles. But these rapid tentacles are actually alternating tentacles. It's actually tentacle in the left group, tentacle in the right group, left, right, it's alternating. So actually, each group is still getting 20 second tentacles, like here. Like, basically, the cooldown on a tentacle is 20 seconds. That's how it's coded. But you're getting two tentacles when the group is split. So that's why the cooldown is cut in half. And then there's 40, and there's 30, and there's 40 here are the big smashes that you soak in between the tentacles. And then there's 20 at the end. Is when the groups are back together and tentacle cooldown is back to 20 because it's one instead of two. But what breaks on this fight is that if a group splits up early, like let's say they, um, for some reason, they just start way sp spread apart on the pull, this 20 second timer is now invalid because the boss is going to go into its uh, split code and there are going to be two tentacles here and not one. And for the rest of the fight, all the timers are wrong. Every one of them, wrong. Because the group did the fight wrong. Now that's why I didn't fix it. There is a way to fix it. I just didn't bother because it's not common for groups to start that way. I didn't see a lot of logs doing this. But the point is, it's one of those things where the way the boss is scripted and the way the mod is scripted aren't actually on the same page. The mod is scripted in a way that works most of the time. And it's one of those things where it's an early boss, it's not too difficult, and I just made the executive decision not make the mod perfect. Even though I know it's not perfect, I know how the boss works. Like I said, sometimes I do the analysis of the boss, and I don't go the extra mile on the mod because I don't need to. Like, I understand what happens here if the group splits up early, and this becomes two smashes 10 seconds apart instead of one smash, you know, 20 seconds apart. But it wasn't worth fixing. But nonetheless, this is a good example of, like, what I have to think about behind the scenes when making these mods. Artificer Zymax, the first time. Castle Nathria. This boss is such a buggy mess. That took a long time to get the timers perfect in this one. Because it was a hard boss, I actually put the time into it to get the timers perfect. And it took a lot of hours of an analyzing this, this fight. Because first thing to discover, there's one thing, there's a bug that can happen. And it's sad that Blizzard deleted these forums. Because I, I actually noted the thread that had the bug. It doesn't exist anymore. Too bad. I had a what, big block of text writing the blizzard. Everything I found in the bug, what causes it, how to fix it, etc. And it's a shame I can't show that anymore. The bug was never fixed. At least as far as I know. But... Basically, this boss is a boss where you have two, uh, two mechanics, basically. Each phase is a, a different mechanic that you have to do 
like the core mechanic is the rifts. You get rifts where you can like step into them and like portal around and stuff. And you have to drop these rifts spread apart so the portals become spread apart. And you use the portal mechanic to deal with the other mechanics the boss does where he does like spirits in phase one, annihilation in like two, and like bombs and stuff. It's three different mechanics, but they all require the rifts. The bug on this boss was that if you push the boss the wrong time, you didn't get rips. But the mechanics came out, and you had literally no portals at all to deal with them. And it was an automatic wipe. There was fuck all you could do about it. You were just wasted a pull because there's no rips. And this bug can occur in two different places based on the boss pushing. And it was really annoying. I remember top guilds wiping this. I remember, I think Liquid literally wiped this on stream during the race more than once. Where they had no rips. And it was just, GG guys. That was the first thing that made this boss annoying. The other annoying thing is perfecting the timers. I kept looking at logs. Each log, or each pull, the timers between casts were different. I couldn't get, the, I couldn't figure out the timer for, uh, you know, the mechanics like seeds or annihilation or spirits. The timers just kept changing pull to pull. And you can see in the initial code here, you know, I was trying to start timers in different ways. Then I found even better ways to do it. But ultimately, really, one, one thing I was missing that Blizzard actually helped with because they realized this is a harder fight. And being a pain in the ass about it was not helping anyone. People were wiping to this boss, which is, like I said, one of those key things. They're not going to fix annoying things that are annoying, but not raid wiping on other bosses just for the sake of boss mods. But they will fix annoying things if it's killing raids. Like, literally just wiping out raids. Minus this one. But the main thing with this problem with this boss is the face changes weren't in the combat log at all. So the true point in the fight where the timers reset was not possible to see. Like, at all. And they added the phase change to the combat log via the script called Encounter Event. What an Encounter Event is, Blizzard has the ability to add a custom combat log event to encounters to flag when important events happen. The spell is literally called Encounter Event, and it's always this spell ID, used in multiple fights. They add this to the fight to signify the real phase changes, and this new phase change code could be added make the timers far more accurate because I was able to see where the timers are truly resetting and reset them accordingly. In addition, I did more digging and analysis on this fight to figure out why the time between casts still wasn't consistent. Especially on Mythic. Well, this, this was like hard-coded and took a little bit of time to figure out. But ultimately I determined because they're not cooldown timers. I, kept tr I just kept trying to treat them like cooldown timers. I was looking for spell queuing. I was looking for sequence timers where they're just... They're variable, but the same pull to pull. They were never the same. They were never spell queued. They weren't influenced by their timers. They're just... Not cooldown timers. What actually happens... There's just a script that runs in that background... Called Rotator. I forget the actual name of it. It was like... Ability Rotator or something like that. Whenever this script runs, it does two things. It spawns a rift, and then it spawns the mechanic that you have to use the rift for x seconds later. So what I did was, I used the two rift spells, and then started the timers for other abilities off the rift spells here. Like I learned that the spirits are always 20 seconds after the rift in phase 1. I learned that the seeds were always 25 or 20 seconds after the rift in phase 2. So instead of trying to make a timer based on the previous seeds cast or the previous spirits cast, I tie it to the rift cast, the way it was truly coded. And the timers became 100% precise. But it took a lot of logs to get it right in all difficulties, and a lot of theories where wait, a lot of time was wasted before the phase change stuff was in there. Because before the, before the true phase change code was in there, it was kind of working blind. 
for some of the theory crafting on this boss. That's one of the reasons a lot of time I went into it. And the other reason a lot of time went into it is because it was just flat broken. But yeah, this is probably the most annoying boss of all time to work on. Now I just want to talk about a few things in general that are annoying to deal with. That aren't tied to specific bosses. I did talk about it a little bit. But that's just any boss where important spells are not logged in the combat log is annoying. Because when you don't have access to Warcraft logs, you lose the most powerful analysis tool you have. Because the big thing about data analysis is the more data the better. I might have one transcript or log for a boss. Or 100 logs in Warcraft logs. Which one's going to give me a better sample size of data? Obviously Warcraft logs. But if the if there are key events in the fight like Agira that I talked about earlier that aren't in the log and that literally renders Warcraft logs useless to me, that is spectacularly annoying from a data analysis point of view because I have to go through hoops to get specialized logs just to get the data I need to even start figuring out how things work. And this is just too common of a thing. At least every raid tier there are bosses that this is the case for. Even now, War Within, there are dungeon bosses that have key mechanics not in the combat log. There are raid bosses that have key mechanics not in the combat log. And there's really no reason for it. It's really annoying. And it doesn't just affect me, it affects, affects weak guard developers, bigwigs, and even raid leaders. I mean, think about that for a sec. If it's not in Warcraft logs, that means your raid leader can't even go into, their, into your log and figure out what the fuck's going on. Because they can't see everything that they need to see. And that just shouldn't be. You want to know what uh, C-L-E-U stands for? Combat Log Event Unfiltered. That's right. It's literally called Combat Log Event Unfiltered. And they filter the fuck out of it. Something's a little bit off about that. But anyways, that's... Someone wanted a video on... Stuff that's a pain in the ass. Here's the video about stuff that's a pain in the ass. I hope it was insightful. The commenter that wanted this video. And to anyone else who just watches it as well. You know, these are some of the problems that, uh... I deal with on the back end. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.